if your parents are like extremely traditional and they're not super aware of like I guess ways to make money with social media or with the internet streaming whatever I think part of it is our job to teach them because we know a lot more about it than them if they haven't learned about it or anything we can teach them in respectful ways and like show them things like people are doing this now people are becoming very successful off of this i'm very passionate about this this means a lot to me and you know i would love to like make a life out of this possibly and i want to go hard on this i think in that way that would make them want to support you more because they understand that there can be financial freedom and everything that they want for you they just want they want you to be financially well that's the thing that's their that's their point you want to so like that. they want to know you'll be okay and like you teaching them about these new ways of making a lifestyle for yourself So, welcome back to the Peace by Peace podcast. This is episode 27. I'm your host, William Parham, and today we're joined by our special guest, high school friend. Haven't seen him in forever. Literally six years. <laughs> Literally six years. Um, Mathil, nice, nice to meet you again, bro. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> no problem. No problem. So, there for people who don't know, um, tell me a few things about yourself. Give me like your three biggest things you'd like to show off to people. Show off to people, yeah. man. Like, if they meet you for the first time, what do you think stands out the most? I would say, well, number one thing that comes to mind is just fitness to me. I talked about that. I'm really into working out. After that, I would say mental health means a lot to me, hence why we're on this podcast. Thank you. Thank a lot of life experiences, a lot of things I think we've all seen and been through that, uh, that we can all just be uh, kinder and better people to each other. Let that come across when I meet somebody, just my uh, demeanor. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, like just being a good person okay. and just showing off like who I really am. Like, just a good dude. So, I mean, as long as I've known, you've always been a good dude. Um, little intro, I almost forgot to say. Piece by Piece is a podcast dedicated towards mental health, self improvement, overall well being, and life experience. So, none of us are experts in the field of mental health yet, but we're all, you know moderately experienced in this game we call life. So we're here to share our experiences with you all and talk about generalized topics that can give you a sense of hope or security, so to speak. And today's topic is life after college. Like, what's going on with your life? How do you maneuver it? How do you handle things? Um, handling things like imposter syndrome. Maybe you don't know what to do, or maybe you're, you know, feel a bit hopeless or you're standing still. And that's what we're here to talk about today. What is imposter syndrome again? So imposter syndrome, I'm glad you asked. It's that feeling of yourself where you're achieving things well and you're in a good state of mind. Like, let's say you, you've accomplished a bunch of feats, accolades, so on and so forth, mm -hmm. but you still feel like you're not good enough. So for instance, if I'm an Olympic athlete and I got a gold medal and I still feel worthless or I'm just like, yo, like this, I don't know what I'm doing. Or I'm not like secure with myself and I'm yeah. just like, I just, made myself like known as like the fastest person in the world or like the number one at this. And I just competed against everyone else and I still feel. Yeah, yeah everyone's hyping you up. You're just like, bro, like, yeah, I don't even deserve this. It's a strong sense of inadequacy. Yeah. That's, that's what I'd say. That's what yeah. imposter syndrome is. Interesting. So, but now let's, let's, let's start from us being in high school and then work our way through there. Yeah. Yeah, so. Shit from, or dude. Cursing or no or yeah, you can curse. Say whatever you want to say. Okay. I try not to though, but I appreciate that. I didn't know. <laughs> well, no, all right, so I'll, I'll bring it up. So in high school, we we've known each other. Uh, we had what, bio class together. Yeah, uh, bio. What was it? Bio GT or whatever it was. It was what? Yeah, it was bio GT. It was like upper level bio or something. With like Miss Jong or something. Miss J right? Was it Miss Jong? No, I think you were in some other bio class, and I always showed up in your class because I was I was I was, <laughs> I, was yeah. I was in like food and, food and nutrition or whatever. Yeah. Like after we finished making food and everything, we used to come down and because our move classes around. were like like parallel. It was like four A or four B or whatever. I don't remember how the school was built, but yeah, yeah. I, I'm yeah. with you. I'm with you. So we had we had bio class together, or like afterwards, we'd all come down and like middle of learning, we'd like goof off in the back, pretty much in like lab, because like 
a lot of crazy things went down in yeah, like in those labs. Classes, <laughs> class was like what, like an hour, fifteen minutes, and but we'd be done in like twenty five, pretty much. So it would just be like the next 35, 40 minutes of goofing off. Yeah. So um, during those times, I guess that's when we really showed our true colors and got to know each other. Facts, all the weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, but let's start. Like, yeah. Do you want to start? Or do you want me to start about how we were in high school? How we were in high school? As individuals. Yeah, for sure. I can start a little bit. We can just piggyback off of each other. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, I was very introverted. I was just like little, this little, in my head, my image was like, I'm just a little skinny little twig, just like walking around. Not really like, like freshman year and sophomore year, I was very quiet. Extremely quiet. Awkwardly quiet. (laughs) It's like I made other people feel awkward because of how introverted I was. And yeah, I feel like that was just because I was just like thinking too much about me like I'm uh, like I'm different or I'm, I'm just like everyone else like seems a little more grown and like this and that they got this going for them and I'm just like a little boy here like you're in your own little box in my own like, little box you're trapped in your and and from middle school it was like it was like 90 percent of my friends went to I think the, the other high school Howard yeah. so then like only a few select people went to Long Reach Facts. so I was one of those few people so I didn't know anybody so I was like, yo, I gotta like, I don't know anybody here, this and that, and just like, trying to make Brand a new friend. New territory. But like, as, as the years progressed, so especially, what was it, the third year of high school, junior year, and then senior year. Bro, that's when I just, <laughs> oh my God, it's like, it's like all the extroverted things that were just inside just let out loose. And I was just, just extremely extroverted, extremely out there, just being super weird, being super confident and comfortable with, with who I am. And um, some people hated it, some people found it obnoxious, some people loved it, and those were like my closer friends. And then, um, but yeah, I was, just, I was just way more, way more just me, junior and senior year, and uh, it was fun. Like, I was just doing just reckless things <laughs> just reckless stuff like in the hallways or whatever just like we we're just goofing around just having fun let me let me ask you this then you think because were you cool with like um people who were like in a grade above you yeah i you feel like people. because once you became like a junior and you were already comfortable with some seniors there was less awkward tension from like the higher classes versus when you were a freshman yeah i would say so okay i, 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 f- I felt the same way i, I yeah, understood I where like, you were coming from that i think that's probably why because when i look think back ninth and tenth grade everyone's grown like all the seniors are like oh they're seniors oh like you know you look at them like yeah. they're above you at that age like you don't really look at each other as equals it's but like, like fact. it's like yeah it's like yeah. something like that but like you know once you get i guess cooler or whatever get homies with people above your class you're like everyone's like, pretty much the same like yeah, no one's yeah. really that different no one's really like where you, you have them in your head like on a pedestal or something like it's we're all we're all the same bro like, we're all here we're all, we're all learning we all got problems yeah, yeah so um that didn't make it easier though funny that's funny when you think back that it's kind of subconsciously how it is when you're like what like 15 like, 16 17 yeah. i don't know like 12 13 freshman year yeah that all right so that's literally how i felt because my i remember my freshman year was was wild um because i went from like being cool with my whole middle school and everyone yeah. to like going through puberty kind of like high school but i'm not gonna lie when i first got to long reach like i saw i saw the girls and i was like whoa what, <laughs> what do you mean what do you mean like what i mean by that is like everyone's like matured like bro girls mature quicker than earlier than guys anyway but i'm saying like the girls i'd play like basketball like pick up sports with and goof off with as their bros like yeah these women look a lot more feminine so i'm like holy <laughs> shit like this is like <laughs> yeah this, this is real so i would be nervous as hell to even like walk or even talk even be in class with any of these girls yeah so i'd be like yo let me like be introverted. Let me shut up. Let me just keep my head down, keep it pushing, and like look up every now and then. Yeah. So I think I think part of that's like so you're just like thinking. I don't know what to say or what's the right thing to say. Right. You don't but then up. yeah, but then you learn that it doesn't matter. Really. It doesn't really matter what literally, you say as long as you're yourself. Literally. All that matters. Man, I didn't learn that till like some girl in my home at class was like, I have to poop. <laughs> and <Yo>. I was, <laughs> like she said that just randomly. And I was like, girls poop. And so like. <laughs> That's a, real, that's a realization. Yeah, I was like, all right, you just like us, <laughs> like that, that, that. Anyways, um, let's talk about now, like getting into college. Yeah. Like, same, same dynamic. I feel like, but a bit more comfortable. Yeah. So you think everyone's equal to an extent, but then you hear about people. This is when, in college, it's like a foundation of super high school. Instead of having people from like this one county or transferring from middle school, you're literally having people from all over the world, from like the other side, like. Pretty much. Yeah, UMBC, I've never met more international students in my life. 
Yeah, UMBC is one of those colleges where you'd be surprised. I was sure. People not even from the U.S. be pulling up. Right, and I was like, damn. So it was like the same aspect, but then that's when like the whole socioeconomic thing came into play. Like I'm driving like a 2002 Honda Accord on campus. <laughs> just some rich Asian oh, dude. Homeboys in pulling up in literally a Tesla. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, for like, real. I'm like jealous as hell. Like I'm trying to not be like upset, but I'm like, damn. He's like, yeah, all my school is paid for it too. I'm like, damn. Yeah, that daddy's money is... Right, right. So then you kind of like, I don't know, I had that feeling of insecurity or self-doubt within myself thinking like, damn, his life's already set and here I am trying to make something. And so then... Set to a certain extent. Okay, okay. What do you... Give me some some insight from you. I mean, like, I, like this in the simplest ways, like, they, like, your family has, like, you're financially well. You don't have to stress about, I think, what majority of college students and people who don't even go to college have to stress about is like you know I'm, I need this education to to literally live to have a roof over my head to continue to help my parents have an easier life of paying rent or getting food or getting groceries the most basic needs that most of us would take granted for but like so people like that pretty much they have that all like it's not their fault or like anything, but they just have that set up already. So it's just like not for real. Um, like it's just everything they're doing now is like in addition to that. I had a, I had this talk with my coworker about that. Like you know nepotism. Yeah, I've heard of it. So that's um how do I say this? nepotism's when you have like that family security. So for instance, if you have like I hope I'm using this correctly. Like if you have a family business, for instance, uh -huh. you can fall back on that family business. So that family business is like providing you to have the option to do yeah. what you please. Yeah. Versus like you have to do what you need to do. So like, for instance, yeah. um, like you're explaining, like to help the general needs of your family, I need this college education. That's what you're working for versus someone like, let's say the, the friend I said who has a Tesla. Yeah. They're literally going to college because it's like a fun experience that parents have no problem paying for. So they can do whatever they want, but they can always fall back on their families like generation. Yeah, growth. it's definitely less stress for sure. Correct. Like there's still stress obviously for everyone, but like it's, oh, yeah. it's less, it's less for sure compared to the other people that we're talking about. And then speaking about stress, how do you, handle that in college how did you maneuver through all that in college yeah, like what were your coping mechanisms honestly so what i went i went to i went to school for three years at university of maryland baltimore county where you went and i transferred to umd college park solely because of the degree i was getting was better to get it from there right um i think that's where most of my stress was was transferring because i think i think the school you only had like one shot to get in and college you, park into the business school, I had two shots. Like one shot when I applied as a transfer student, yeah. and if I didn't get into the business school, I'll have another shot as an internal applicant. Damn. So I didn't get into the business school with my initial transfer. I just got into seat, a college park, right. normal way. And then my advisor's like, you have a semester or whatever, and then you can apply to the business school. But if you don't get in, that's it. Do you have to pick a different major not within the business school? So I was like, bro, like I'm transferring because of this. Like this, this is what I'm doing this for. So I went hard that semester and um, I had a backup plan. Literally, I met with my advisor at UMBC. And shit, this is so weird. <laughs> UMBC, University of Maryland Backup College, I swear to <laughs> Yeah, pretty much, that's what, that's what it was. And I, I met with her and I was like, I'm, I want to take classes again. She's like, why haven't you been? This was after like maybe a semester was ending at UMD where I wasn't, I didn't get the return, I guess, acceptance or, de or I got declined yet from the business school. So I wasn't sure what was going to happen. So I had a, the whole backup family with my advisor at UMBC and I was like, I'm trying to come, if I want to come back, what classes should I take, this and that. And then they were like, why did you take a break? Like why, why? Why is there a year off from when the last time we seen you enrolled here? And I just made some, some BS up because I didn't want to tell them, yo, I'm at UMD right now. Okay. So, you know, I had that system. whole backup plan. So that's like kind of one way I coped with it. Mm -hmm. But I was like, there's no way if I don't get in, I can't go back. I told all my friends, like, I'm leaving. They're like, I left. This boy left just to come back. <laughs> like, hey. I can't I can't do that. So then I went hard at UMD for my first semester and I got in, luckily, unfortunately. Unfortunate. Um, unfortunately. Fortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah. That's, that's such a plus. Um, I think people don't emphasize enough. Like, it's okay to fail and, like, come back. Like, it's yeah. such a big fear that it everyone is, yeah. has. It's like, oh, if I don't make it, everyone's going to look at me differently and everyone's going to, like, shame me. But it's yeah. like, bro, like, I tried. I gave it my best shot. If it didn't work out, it didn't. But if it did, like, 
roof at me. Like I'm. That's facts. That's that's yeah. that's what that's how we think now. But like, I think when you're younger, you just it's a definitely you have to like that's a learning curve. Getting over the judgment, getting over what other people might think about you in certain ways. But then you realize now, it like it matter. it does not matter at all. I think per, like personally, we had that experience. Maybe this might have let me know if this contributed to why you were introverted. Yeah. But for me, now that we're saying this more, I was scared of what other people thought because of how quick word could travel around. Yeah. Because since our school was like so relatively small, yeah. like, yo, there was this rumor in school about me like sucking, like sucking dick for fucking shoes. Like, <laughs> for what? For shoes. For you know, shoes? Remember, remember, <laughs> what, yeah, time, what shoes were remember they, when bro? Concord 11s came out and they got real popular? <laughs> what shoes were they? Remember when the Concord 11s came out when they got like super popular? Yeah, I'm fucking everybody yeah, had People them. were literally killing each other for those shoes. And like my boy Jesus. hooked me up. I had some decent shoes at the time, so we traded. And like we kind of did like a wear, a wear test for the day. Just uh-huh. like make sure they were right, they felt right. So like I wore those for like the day. Got some attention from everyone. Like, yo, Will got the Concord 11s. Yeah. And then my boy, I'm not going to na- call his name out, but he was like, bro, you saw dick for those? And like everyone started hyping him up afterwards. Like, yo, Will did that. And so. He just made that up though. He made it up. But it was the fact that a little rumor like that spread within like a day or two. Yeah. And then even the, so the upper class even thought I sucked dick for like girls were looking at me differently. Guys were looking at me differently. <laughs> and I'm sitting here. I like, didn't I didn't hear about that rumor, so I don't I'm so know. Glad. I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first Any, time I'm hearing that. Anyone in the sneaker community at, at high school. Bro, every, everyone became a sneakerhead. I know, it got so popular now. You know Donald Trump was at SneakerCon? I didn't know that. Yeah, this past I think the past like the, I mean when you're oh, when you're Donald Trump, why not? Just do whatever. This is recent though. I'm talking about like yesterday. He was like in, oh. in like PA just trying to celebrate it. Damn, good for him. Uh, <laughs> like, that's, great. That's, that's how you know it's becoming oversaturated. <laughs> Black vote. <laughs> it's tight shit. Um, but yeah, so that, that's something that contributed. So I feel like once you get to college and you realize things are getting a bit more expansive and like people actually have priorities. Yeah. No one's gonna care what you do for like. That's what you realize, dude. People be like in like onesies or whatever, just going to class. You're like, you don't even think, you're not even judging. You're like, Type like, like that's I feel that. that's cool. Like <laughs> I'm a little jealous. I'm happy to see you being comfortable. I could not I could not pull up to like class in like pajamas. Yeah. I felt so bad. Cause going to office hours, my professors all dressed up, like giving their best effort to give me an education. Here I am, yeah. like half awake, like No, nah, I think no, like what you said, like after you I think after you go through something, like I feel like you learn everything through experience. It's like you're not gonna no one's just born like, oh, I know all this. Like you learn from either going through something that's like embarrassing or right. possibly traumatic or just, just anything positive or negative. Like you need to go through something to learn, but you also need to like be aware of what you went through, whether it was good or bad and actually apply those takeaways. Like you said, like if that embarrassing thing happened to you, you could have went one or two directions. It could have been the end of your life in terms of like mentally, like, yo, like this is, this sucks, this is too much. I don't know what to do, transfer schools or do something crazy. Nothing wrong with anything, if, if, even if you did that. But like, that's one path. And another path is you get stronger from it. Oh, I'm gonna be more extrovert. I'm gonna just be me. I'm gonna double down on me. Like I'm a, whoever is like messing with me will be with me. Bro, not on what you did. I literally but, just play sports more. That's literally but like, like you know, like, you learn from that stuff and you, you you change from those things um but like going back to your initial question i don't think i answered it fully like the stress with college yeah. i think i had i had a lot of stress in the beginning when uh, when my grades weren't really the best but i'm fortunate enough to have like the parents that were just very much for me doing what makes me happy and um initially they wanted like me to like obviously like now you know they, they tell me like oh like we wanted you to be like a doctor or like you know the typical brown thing traditional yeah the traditional yeah and I, they're like the moment world. they realized i hated bio and like i hated it and stressed me out they're like just do whatever makes you happy and we'll be happy and that like that moment that relieves so much stress from my head so like me going through college and doing everything was just like i'm gonna do what i want to do and i'm gonna just enjoy this time i'm gonna still you know graduate and everything and i'm just gonna enjoy what I'm doing really and that relieved all the stress from like I need to I need to do this I need to do that because so many people are relying on me so for them just me wanting me to be genuinely happy with what I do whatever I decide yeah. that caused like all the extra stresses to go away and I just enjoyed it a lot more that way yeah that sounds I'm fucking beautiful very fortunate for them um, but my mom grew up here so it's like she understands America or like how, how, how um in 
So she she went to high school in in like around Philly in Pennsylvania. Okay. So she like and she went to college in in Philly and all that. So like okay. she basically grew up with the education system here. So she's seen everything. She she's hip to everything. Okay. My dad on the other hand, so he got his education done in India and then he came here. But damn. But I think having that balance of both and them both being growing to be a little they're still very like they're still they're still traditional, but they've grown to be modern too. So like having that understanding and that open mindedness that I think a lot of people and parents in the Asian community um, don't have, and a lot of like my friends and and whatnot, they deal with a lot of a lot of pressure from their parents because like they they grew up that way, so that's how they raise their children now. But you know, it's not understanding that we're we're in a different time period. Like we were raised differently, we we're around different things. Yeah, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm just grateful for them being that understanding to like allow me just to be me well shout out to your mom and dad man. not for real shout out to my mom and dad yeah that's beautiful <laughs> i can only imagine like the the pressure it is from i learned this in social psych from like the, the, the traditional roles of generations from let's say you like you come from a lineage of doctors so you have the, all yeah. this pressure from <laughs> you gotta be a doctor right all these literally <laughs> peer hold on literally um peer pressure from dead people just like from stacking people that's what tradition is that's literally all it is true but like just stacking up on you trying to expect you to be this way when you're your own individual who grew up in your own different environment in yeah society like we're in we're literally in america where the pandemic kind of changed everyone's mindset from working a traditional nine to five to yeah like being entrepreneurs and like doing that's like crazy what, you did, what makes you happy and what you actually enjoy doing yeah so it's yeah it's crazy what are your thoughts on that by the way um traditional versus modern do you think there's like we need a balance in terms of what should there be more traditional households than modern households um when it comes to the college life like what do you think is the best way i think it's a healthy balance because if you're too modern yeah if you're too like too loose with it like oh it doesn't like i don't care what you do like do whatever you want Mm -hmm. um whether like i don't know like i feel like there needs to be some sort of traditional modern balance just so there's uh I don't know. It's just like if you're too traditional, then the kid becomes, in my opinion, too, too like boxed in, too like pressured. And, you know, they might want to do things like against their parents will or whatever. Because Cause rebellion. Yeah. yeah, like rebellion and stuff and being way too modern is like those. They might just be extremely reckless. But like my parents don't care. Oh, they got my back. No matter what I do, I'm gonna be in jail. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. But like that balance of both is just. I think it's perfect. Like okay. understanding that there are consequences to things that you do, yet you have the free will to do whatever makes you happy, but just don't be re- extremely reckless. Agreed. I mean, I could understand that you have this great perspective because like you said, your mother raised an American education system and your father yeah. in Indian. So it's like, you kind of have a good mix of both. You know, there's parenting styles. I don't know all four of them, but there's auth- authority. I can't say that. Author- I can't even say that. Yeah, you know, authorita- <laughs> authoritarian, if I'm saying this correctly, but that's the. Yeah, <laughs> can you authoritarian. Say it? Yeah, yeah. It's like when you're grown up in a super strict household. Or, and yeah, can you look, look that up, the four parenting styles? Oh, yeah. The um, authoritarian is like when it's like, yeah, you have to do it my way. I My way or the highway? Literally, my way or the highway. I provide all the securities. You have to do what I say. Yeah. And then there's one, I think it's dismissive, where it's like you're nonchalant, you're down the road, where it's like do whatever you want. Uh, we'll support you no matter how you feel. Yeah. So you're right. There needs to be a good balance. Yeah. You got authoritarian. Authoritarian. Authoritative. Authoritative. Permissive. Permissive. And uninvolved. 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 Yeah, uninvolved. That's uninvolved's the laid back one. Yeah, extremely laid back one. So I think there, there definitely needs to be a good mix between that because yeah. with society forever evolving, you kind of parents don't know what's trending or what's new or what's gonna be like yeah. the next stream of income. Yeah, that's facts. Versus traditional where it's like you need to stick with this way because this is what's never gonna change. But like I said, with America and how things are evolving now, like come on, we're on the internet. You know that you can literally make money from playing video games nowadays. Bro, you can make money from doing anything. Exactly, but our parents, like traditional wise, would be like, "No, you need to do this job because it's provide you this." Yeah, because they know that's how you make money. Like that's Correct. all they. That's what they know. Correct. Yeah. So they need to. There's so that balance needs to come in where it's like I understand 
okay, this is what I'm saying you should do, but if you believe you can make some money from this, if you can like generate some type of income, I'll support it. Yeah. Which is why I like the whole sure. aspect of like, people should have a college degree to fall back on, but still pursue what they want to do. Because the college degree is kind of like a backup, if not a contributor to what you're pursuing. Yeah, it's like, I mean, there's people who haven't even gotten an education and they've been extremely successful. Right. There's also right. people who have, and they've also been successful. There's people who become extremely great entrepreneurs and went back to school just to have just to have a degree. degree. But um, but yeah, no, nah, you're right. I was, I was going to say something, but I lost my train of thought. Oh, dude, if, if you come up with it, we'll come back. I was randomly blurted out. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, let's talk about, I guess, more life after college yeah like what once you graduated what was your your first big plan and what did you want to do immediately after you graduated bro i didn't honestly it was just like oh the, the thought came back right, say it, say it, say it. <laughs> i was gonna say i think it's but part of the job is is when a lot if your parents are like extremely traditional mm -hmm. and they're not super aware of like i guess ways to make money with social media or with the internet streaming whatever i think part of it is our job to teach them because we know a lot more about it than them if they if they're if they haven't learned about it or anything we can teach them in respectful ways and be like yo like this is show them things like people are doing this now people are becoming very successful off of this i'm very passionate about this this means a lot to me and you know i would love to like make a life out of this possibly and i want to go hard on this and i think i think in that way that would make them want to support you more because they understand that you know there's there can be financial freedom and everything that they want for you they just want they want you to be financially well that's the thing that's their that's their point you want the so like that. yeah they want they want to know you'll be okay and like you teaching them about these these new ways of making a lifestyle for yourself i think would enable them to support you more it's like kind of what happened like if i talk to my parents about things that i'm passionate about and i show them different things and like yo like look like, this person's like i've been watching this person my whole life since i was a kid you know why can't i can be like them too like the only difference between them and me is that like the work work ethic they've been having the Facts. time they put into it you see the all blueprint, that, like, you see the the blueprint, blueprint yeah. and like uh, if they if they can do it i can do it too and like you showing them how much you care about it and everything allows them to really like have your back with it because you're they're your parents at the end of the day they're gonna want you to be happy um but like yeah, part of it's our job, basically. That, that's like, I agree. I, I like the part where you said, educate our parents more into like how this is possible, yeah. and what you can make from it. Because like you said, our parents kind of play like that safe role. Or like, yeah. They want us to have the best, they want us to have the best security, financially. They don't know we'll be okay. Right, right. But nowadays, I think what we need to educate our parents about is that the return on investment for college, it's not the same as it was when they were in school. Yeah, for sure. Like, if you look at the money gap, like, disparity or the difference, um, college is, like, damn near almost six figures now, especially if you want to pursue, yeah. like, grad school. Yeah. And if you look at that long-term investment, that's six People figures are... in debt plus interest, which is, yeah. like, I don't know, I'm, I think it's, like, 6%, or that's Maryland's tax, whatever. Yeah. Um, plus interest, it's not paying off the way you want it to. Yeah. And you're actually... How do I say this? If you're sit sitting at a standard, you're falling below that threshold once you graduate college because now you're trying to play catch up to pay all that back pay all so that you can off. live your life forward. But yeah. in that moderate zone of paying it back, you don't know how to like, you know, de-stress yourself or, or find ways to enjoy the process of living yeah. life because you're so caught up with, oh, I got debt, I got work, housing. I have a social life. No social life. <laughs> yeah. Whereas in college, it's like all that's kind of given to you in one area. Pretty much, you know, a little town. Right, and so once you come back from college, you're like significantly less stimulated. For sure. Like I'll admit, UMBC was more lit than, I guess, actually, I'm capping. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm capping, not, UMBC's not lit. Like two UMBC's PM, not lit at all. It's a ghost town. So I'm kind of glad I went to UMBC. Um, but I can imagine you going from College Park to back home, it's significantly like less social, right? Yeah, for sure. Especially yeah. after graduating. And I think one last thing to say about that is like, you know, your, our parents and us, it's both of our, this is like, I'm sure you heard this before. It's both of the, both, it's everyone's first shot at life. Yeah. So you can't like, it's easy like to bag on anyone like that. But like, you know, they're, they're going through this for their first time too. This is their first life. This is our first life. So like, it's fine. you got to show some grace in that area with, with people for sure. Of course. Um, I guess that, that's going to lead to my next question then. 
What's your leeway with your parents when it comes to pursuing what you want and then kind of going against what they want? Because you know there comes that point in your life where your parents might say you're, you're not doing the right thing and you need to do this, you need to do that, but you're kind of just like, mom, dad, I believe in this. Yeah. This is what I want to do, so I think you should just stop trying to advise me, push, lean back a little bit and watch me. Just like trust me a little bit. Yeah, give me some trust. I think that's like, that's, I think it's hard for a lot of people. And I think you can't really escape that. It's just like something you kind of just have to not just deal with, but you know, let's say you're, you did your best, you're doing your best every day to try to help them understand and everything and like be a part, be a part of your process instead of feeling like they're kind of graining against you. Like you're trying to go here and they're like pushing you back a little right. with what, like basically what you asked, man, at that point, you really just gotta put your head down because if you really believe in something, if your dream, like even, even if you, you don't want your parents or your best friend or your brother or whatever to not believe in it or to tell you otherwise, but if you really have that vision in you, if you really have that desire, it's like in your heart and your soul, like I want this, like no matter what, even if I make no money out of it, I want to do this because I'm so happy doing it. You just, you have to give it everything. Because in the end, like, your parents will be happy for you. They'll see, okay, like he, if you if you really put in all that work and you get to where you're supposed to get, or nearly if you get halfway to where you where you want to get, they'll see like, yo, he he's doing it. Like he's doing it. I'm proud of you. And like you know, that'll be a little moment there too. But like you you have to go against, um, you, not against them, but just against that grain of people or anyone, whoever it is, whether it's like your loved one or anyone you have to just do what you know is right for yourself right. and what you're extremely passionate about and just just chase it and worst case it's like you're back to square one but like best case life changing preaching the choir here so that, that's gonna lead to my next question here is um the gym like do your parents encourage you to the for the gym do they know anything about it like what's I know yeah. you've been into the gym for what, three, three, four years now? Some, something like that, Yeah. three, four. How do your parents feel about you like kind of becoming a gym master? In the beginning, it was like, so I told you that in the, when I started like in about senior year of high school, it was me tired of being skinny. And I felt like I was easy to be picked on or like easy just to move around. Like, oh, he's like, I can, you know, it's exactly. easy That's stuff. definitely a high school thing. It's a high school thing for sure. And I was like, man, I was like, bro, I'm, I'm sick of this. I'm, I'm going to do something about this. And then I started doing those home workouts and everything and just push ups and had these dumbbells. So just laid on the floor and just did flat dumbbell presses and flies on the floor. Tried to do pull ups and, um, like this ties into the question. I tried to do pull-ups on this pull-up bar, the one that you put on your door. Yeah. Um, Lock in. Yeah. yeah, and I couldn't do it, and I was like so frustrated. I was like, can't even do a pull-up. Like I'm trying to get stronger. This like, looks like it's supposed to be easy, and I was like, like crying about it. And I was like, man, like I, I'm not. I, I can't do this. And this was what when I was like maybe like 17 or whatever. And then my dad, he's just like, you know, like he. He was like, all right, like he showed me YouTube videos. He was like, look at this, like this guy put a chair here. So get on, he got me a chair, get on the chair, stand up, hold on to it. And then like slowly let yourself down, do the, the negatives, wow. negative pull-ups. So he helped me do that, um, build up that courage. Be like, yo, you can do this, just keep pushing. I'm a 17 year old kid. So then when I can't do something, I'm just like, I can't do it. Yeah. yeah, but like he helped me, he encouraged me to do all that. And now he's like, look at you doing like, X amount of pull-ups. Do you remember when you used to cry when you couldn't do one? We laugh about that now. I'm like, yeah, I do remember that. It's crazy where where I start, where we started from, from where we're at now. But he's been encouraging me since pretty much day one of that, and um, they still encourage me every day. I show my mom my videos and my dad my videos of you know me in the gym or whatever I'm doing. But um, you know they're they're your parents. The only the only thing they'll say sometimes is just be safe, like be careful when you're when you're doing this or doing that. Just don't hurt your spine and give you those lectures. You're like, mom, I'm good. Be Dad, careful. I'm good. They don't want you to I hurt yourself you. a lot. Yeah. yeah, but they're they're supportive for sure because they saw like how I guess small I was to where I am now, and there's like they just want me to be safe while I'm doing it. I'm like, I got you. Don't worry. Great. But they're supportive for sure with that whole thing. I love that. Um, I'm gonna insert this little. Uh, not quote, but excerpt I have. Are you familiar with Andrew Huberman? Yes, I've heard. Okay, so he had he has a podcast, uh, Huberman Lab. I can't remember the exact episode, but it was regarding motivation. 
Mm-hmm. He says when someone encourages you, specifically someone close to you, encourages you to achieve a certain goal or aspect, mm-hmm. whatever you're achi- ach- yeah, aiming for, it makes you actually less inclined to do it. it makes really? You, like, it takes away motivation. So when someone's kind of like doubting you or regretting or saying you can't do something, that yeah. actually increases your state of motivation. I, I don't know the science exactly behind it, but yeah. he's the one with a PhD. Not no. me. So, yeah, no, that, yeah. that's facts too. I agree, because when people doubt me, when I can sense people are doubting me or people like, you know, you just hear things and whatnot, like, oh, like he, he, he won't be able to do that or he can't do that. Or you can just get that energy, you can feel that energy off of certain people, whether you know them or not. Yeah. It's a different drive for sure. It ignites some a crazy fire, and you're like, just, you're like, you know what? Watch me. Like, I'm, I'm gonna show you. Like, watch me. Not for real. And then you do it. You're like, watch me do more. Watch me do this. Yeah. That, that Not out of hate mean. or spite, but just out of like motivation. Motivation. Like, like, yeah. like, keep down to me. Like, you'll see what I, um, what I know I'm capable of. I'm gonna show you. And you like, you go hard. You just keep building from that. I think both helps, but that the the doubting and the hating. It ignites a completely different fire than the love and support. I think both are great, though. You want both. You obviously only want the love and support, but some, I guess, something in your brain just fires up. It's like I'm gonna prove it to you with all the hate and doubt. I'm not gonna lie. I like, I like the the negative drive more. Than the the villain arc story. Yeah, I like, I like <laughs> everyone's the on story. that now. <laughs> We're gonna get into that. But, all right, bro. So I love the negative drive because it pertains to sports so well. So like back when I was a college athlete, like having people kind of doubt me for what I could do yeah. gave me the drive to go harder because not only it's that unexpected factor that people are like shocked by, so it's external validation, uh-huh. but for me it was like, it was more internally validating. Like for people who could say, oh, you can't, you know, you can't get playing time as a freshman. Or, oh, like, you know, you're just uh, athletic and black and you can do only this, this and that. It just like makes me wanna try something new because it's like I, I like defining the uh, defying the odds. Yeah. And breaking like stereotypes or like expectations of other people. Cause it's like you know nothing about me. That's facts. So how are you gonna try to put me in my place for things that you don't even know that I can do? And things half of the time they don't even haven't even attempted or tried the things that right, you're doing. Right. But they're so quick to tell you like, oh you can't do this and Yeah, that's just how people are. Facts. But now getting into this, I'm glad you said villain art. So for people who are on social media, TikTok, there's this whole trend of like Sigma edits. Like if you know what Sigma male is, it's not the alpha, it's not the omega, it's not the beta. Sigma is like the... It's like a silent alpha male. It's like a silent alpha male. So they're like above the alpha male. So for instance, they say like, if you know Batman, I want you to know Batman. Yeah. Batman's considered Sigma. He like sticks to the shadows. He does the dirty work. But like at the end of the day, he's like the ultimate human or whatever. There's these cringy edits on TikTok where like guys are in dark rooms, lifting weights, hoodie up, like just <laughs> vibing, thinking and like lifting. But then the commonality from all of that, it's like heartbreak. I realized yeah. like, it's like, oh, my girl broke up with me. I'm just going to be like. Yeah, either that or just like something like devastating happening to you. Right. Or you just creating like a story within yourself, I guess, for some reason. Correct. Correct. But, and I think like it's cool when you're going through that yourself, but when you put on the internet, it almost feels a bit like discerning because the internet's supposed to be like entertainment, like positive, like funny vibes, maybe like knowledge, education. So when you put something a little on the opposite, where it's like, watch me be all dark and brooding, it's it's like um, it's a conundrum. Yeah. No, I think because we're trying to entertain us by showing how negative you feel, like. That, that. Some people consider like this question as art. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's such a serious I'm, issue. Like, why are you like? I'm gonna disagree a little bit. Okay. On on the first part, I think you can. If 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 you went through anything, I think post whatever you want. If you're in a, if you're in in that little hoodie phase or whatever, because you're really going through it or whatever. Yeah. Post it. Go go about it. This is probably someone else who's dealing with that. Ooh. You know, there's there's okay, 100% there. there's you someone there. else dealing with that who's watching that can relate to it. Um, and I think that would help that person out. Like you know like if you're giving off a proper message of it and whatever, how you're going about it. Um, I think that's like the key to it. Like Give post whatever message. you want. Like if you're going through whatever, whatever it is, like post about it, it's the internet. You okay. can post whatever you want. You're free to do all that. But I think the way you go about it is more important 
than I guess what you're exactly doing, like what you're giving off, the vibe you're giving off, the energy you're giving to yeah, someone, the, to the person watching. How you're yeah, presenting. the energy you're giving off. If it's like, if like you're, if since we're talking about Bill and Mark, if it, if that's like evil in a way, like oh, like screw everybody else because you got that's, screwed that's over. That's what I was thinking. That's like was thinking. screw anybody else's feelings. Screw whatever being a good person or trying or whatever like to be yeah. proper like learn or whatever just i'm a, a dick. yeah i'm gonna just be a dickhead now and just who cares because i went that's, through this that's the shit i don't like that's yeah that's like giving off the wrong energy to people but going through it and you know people seeing your growth through certain things or whatever seeing how you deal with it in a healthier way i think it's nothing's wrong with that that okay i agree with you there i you said what i said earlier I was referring to like instilling like the negative behavior yeah. that people exude online. Yeah, like um, doing something crazier. Cause I love I love a good transformation video. I love when it's like some dude was like, oh, I was, like David Goggins. I was like 300 pounds. I was spraying for cockroaches. And yeah. Then I looked myself in the mirror, and then some dude said, oh, less than like 10 percent of the not Marines, the um, Navy SEALs are African American. He was like, what if I could break that? What if I could be like past that 10%? What if I could defy the odds? Yeah. Dude literally runs marathons for fun. Yeah. Like, who's gonna carry the boats and the logs and yeah, like, all that's that? Yeah, that's his little villain arc, but it's yeah. doing it in a it's motivation. motivational yeah. way. Yeah, so I, I definitely appreciate that for sure. Now, nah, me and my friends, we used to, uh, so when that was like more hype, we used to just that, truly look at each other in the gym, be like, who's gonna carry the boats and the logs? We're gonna struggle on that last rep. <laughs> I love that, I love that. Oh man, okay, let me think. What's, I wanna kinda get like a little side topic here. Cause yeah, go ahead. We talked about college and what we all did. Bro, be honest, like how do you, actually yeah, we'll bring this up. We talked about it before we started. How do you feel about being closer to 30? What, what? Closer to, bro. Is, um, is it scaring you? Are you excited? Like, cause we're, all, we're, all, we're I'm all still 25, that. so I'm not closer to 30. That's like what you said. You were like, I said, once you get, once, 26, once you get like 26, 27. Yeah. But how? What's, that's what's what? With, that's what he said. What's with this? But, all right. What's with the thirty mark? Like, what's what's so important about being thirty? That's what I'm trying to understand. Honestly, if you're asking me, I don't. It don't really matter. Okay. Like yeah, I you think. Can chime in. If you yeah, you can chime in if if you feel. You're not gonna feel that way once you hit twenty-seven. Once I hit twenty-seven, I feel like okay. You, you have the pressure of like other people's <laughs> yeah. getting married, and you see. Okay, yeah. And that. You're like, what am I delaying? Yeah. yeah. So, so listen. Hey, I'm Enye, and uh, <laughs> our friend off camera was just talking Crazy. about how once you do get near thirty, you have all these expectations. You know, friends getting married, having children. You got, you know, family looking at you. You got, like, I think it is once you get past that twenty-five, it's definitely some pressure coming, and you know, say you. Yeah. You got a year left, buddy. <laughs> you gonna feel it. So, nah. For sure, man. Like, you feel that kind of, I guess, a good tension or a good kind of anxiety of like, okay, this is my make it or yeah. break it type season. Yeah. I can, I can understand. I agree, actually. Like, I think, for sure, I still do with that now. It's like, your parents are like, they're talking about, you know, marriage, this and that, and everything. And you see people, all right, people, even younger than us, people we know, that have kids, yeah. multiple kids, and married. Yo, and me shot that pissed the dog off. He didn't like me. hearing that. What? Oh, he didn't like hearing that. Uh, it frustrates oh, this, him. Oh, this is dog. <laughs> but um. <laughs> oh my god. She was like, she was like marriage. <laughs> <laughs> she was like marriage. <laughs> no, that's, but that's true. Though. Having kids is just like wild right now. Yeah, like I agree with that point. Cause like when you see that happening, you're like, bro, like. Bro, I was like 20, 24 or whatever, getting married, getting engaged. Yeah. And you're just like, that's crazy. And then, you know, when you do, as you get older, obviously I think even in, at least in Asian cultures, it's like, even before you're 25, they start bringing up, marriage. they start bringing up marriage and, and all that stuff. And you're like, let me like, I'm trying to still figure out what I want to do, yeah. let alone be married to someone. But like, yeah, that pressure gets to you. Like, it, it, can, it can get to you. Yeah, the reason I was like, oh, it don't matter is because I think it's just what I've learned within myself. I'm just like, there's always going to be someone. someone that's going to be saying, you should be here, you should be doing that, you should be doing this, you know. But at the end of the day, as long as you're progressing, as long as you're literally 
doing your best and going as cliche as it sounds, but you actually have to not just like do your best. Oh, I'm like trying my best, but actually put in that effort and know yes. I am doing my best. I am doing the best I can um, with, with my health. I'm doing the best I can with finances. I'm going hard on my dreams. Legit waking up every day and going hard. That's doing your best. And obviously there's off days and everything, but like, of course. I think that term doing my best, do your best is used very loosely now. I can agree. I, I feel like that sometimes people say that and it's like they're not doing their best. They're trying to and that's okay. Get off the hook with it. Yeah. I only, me personally, I'm not going to speak for everyone, I only feel like it's okay when, you know, you're personally trying to achieve a goal. But if yeah. you're like holding someone else to a standard yeah. and you're telling them you're doing your best, but you're not, it's like, it's, it's almost viewed as an excuse. It might sound petty. That's what I was trying to get at, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't sit right with me. Like for instance, let's say like I have kids and my kids are like, dad, I want to have like, where's dinner? And then it's like, I had a long day at work, bro. I'm doing my best. And I don't feed my kids. I'm like, bro. Yeah. Like, no, for sure. I, I wasn't surprised my kids became like little deviants or like, yeah. like stab me in my sleep or some shit. That's well, cool. <laughs> that was, that was, that was what? Kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but, um, nah, I definitely want to talk more like being, at least for coming of age or like being yeah. 30, I think everyone should at least have some, have, some types of assets and have a certain skill set. For sure. So like if you were to be cut off from everything, you're left in the world on your own, it's just you, like your family, like, it's just you. You should at least have some type of resources and some type of skills to at least maneuver in the world and work your way from there. Yeah, I agree. Whether it's being like social, interpersonal communication or like having a trade or being an engineer, or like business, like you should be able to have something that you can fall back on that can kind of push you forward in the future. Yeah, that like ties into like doing your best like to learn and right, like grow, right. Correct. like actually learn and grow. And um, yeah, like the older you get, like that pressure, like you gotta be good at certain things. Cause mm -hmm. if you're not, it's just like, yeah. how are you gonna maneuver through this world not knowing like some of those most basic things? Correct. Um, like no one's gonna want you. Like I'm not trying to sound petty, but like no one's gonna, no one's gonna desire, like no one's gonna have use or desire for you. You need, you need to be able to provide value for sure. Correct. And yeah, the older you get, you're like, you come to that, like, am I providing value? Like, what can I do to be better, to provide more value to myself, mm -hmm. to other people, to the world? What, you know, what, you start thinking about everything, right? Like, right. what's my purpose? Like, what am I like here for? And all that, everyone's thought of that, whether, That's when that I don't know, when you were, kicks in. yeah, when you're, either when you're higher or whatever, like, bro. even when you're not, it's like, it's just thoughts that people have, like, Bro, like 2 a.m. thoughts, those things, <laughs> but um, they're real, sure. they're real for sure. And it's just like, at the end of the day, after that, whatever you're thinking, however you're thinking about it, once you hit a certain age and all those thoughts, it's just like, the bottom line is just what actions am I taking and what can I do in this very moment to get to where I want to get, whether how small, however small, I guess, the progress is. Yeah or how, how big it is, like what can I do right now in this moment just to, to have those building blocks because like you can't just like think, um, like nothing just works like from A to like Z. You need to do things step by step. Set little, if that even made sense. No, that makes yeah. perfect sense. <laughs> literally, you're, you're, you're saying set a plan for yourself, something that you can execute step by yeah, step. Like when you, One, two, three, four in order. Yeah, when you have those realizations. Cause that'll help you I think that'll help alleviate the stress and the anxiety of, oh, if, if you are thinking, oh, I'm getting older, I'm getting this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what can I do now to be better and to get to where I want to get? So that way, the older you get, you realize I'm I'm going towards something now. I'm getting closer, like, day yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that entirely. And then to add on, while, while you're getting closer to that goal, day by day, you should have little de-stressors along the way so you don't yeah. overload yourself you don't feel like you you want to do this anymore because in the workforce like i mentioned earlier when people are working off their debt they're working so much of what they study to do that they're gonna end up hating their jobs yeah. because they're so focused on paying back the money that they lose track of what they enjoyed studying for for free so then it creates this crazy disparity that's why i guess like things like drinking and partying become so normalized because it's how people de-stress and get over it. But yeah. It's just not enough time to make up for that stress, which is why I'm going to say here, like you should practice something that you should do on your own. 
it doesn't require other people, whether it's like the gym or like me personally, I picked up an instrument. Mm -hmm. I kind of, I practice like 10 minutes every night before bed. I started playing the guitar. So That's dope. Thank you. So I start practicing scales. I strum like 10, 10 chords a night, um, 10 times in a row. It has to be the same sound. So no one's around. It's just me. And then go to bed, wake up. It's like, all right, time to get back. Yeah, no, I like that. That's cool. Thank you. So just a skill you can have for yourself that you can build upon and you see the growth. So it's like um, a side project from your main goal. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like there are healthy there are healthy ways and there's unhealthy ways. Like like you said, right. like if you get addicted to to anything like partying or going out to the club or just drinking and like those are like you can have fun. You can do all that. Nothing wrong with that. But if that's just your go-to, it's, it's kind of it, it can become a, a terrible problem like down the line. Especially when you're spending like money like. Going, yeah. going out to social events gets expensive over time. So like yeah. my personal advice is I say if you want to go to a social event, you should either go every like, every time you hit like maybe a major milestone, like let's say you wanted to make a certain amount of money or you wanted to, I don't know, hit a certain PR in the gym. Like once you hit that PR, make that amount of money, go out and celebrate it. Go to the club, go with your friends, do something. Yeah. You need a healthy occasion. balance for sure. Correct. Or else you'll just drive yourself crazy. Correct. Because if you go to the club every weekend or every time, like, you, <laughs> something's wrong with you, bro. <laughs> yeah, you're going gonna to lose track of yourself and who you are because you're so caught up with yes. being surrounded with other people. Too right? much external noise and you yeah. literally don't know who you are at that point. Bingo. Yeah. Like you, you do need to spend time with yourself. I think that's another thing that a lot of people have, like, problems with now, especially this generation and going forward like sit in a room with yourself with no music no nothing like have music or whatever at certain times but like can you just sit by yourself for like an hour for 30 minutes and know who you truly are Great. like i'm like outside of the if you have a job outside the job you have outside of the hobby outside of the gym who are you when you're not like a fitness person who are you when you're not an accountant or whatever you're not a son like a who student. are you like yeah. besides strip your name off of you too like who are you bro like you can can you sit with yourself and try to like this is, it's not magic you're not gonna know but like you need to be able to spend time with yourself to understand who you truly are and know what path that you want to kind of go on or lean towards but I think a lot of people are caught up in that external noise a little too much where you're not even aware about you. Makes you almost like a soulless husk. So Pretty so. much, yeah. Like the, the biggest way you can point someone out for that is if you have a conversation with them and like you just said, who are you? Yeah. Ask them that, like, who are you if you weren't doing this, that, and that? Yeah. If they can't give you a general response in like five seconds or less, they lost track of who they are. Not like lost track, but I, I was all right. I lost track is stretch, um, but like they they are out of touch with their yeah. their own person. Like their career is their identity at that point. And that's like such a societal norm where it's maybe not their problem, but it's just a societal norm that's mm -hmm. just what people go to. Like if I ask literally half to, nine out of ten times, I'll ask someone how are you. They'll talk about work. They'll, I'll like what's up. Like it's been a while. Oh, they'll talk about work, this and that. I'll like I love catching up with that and everything, but then when they're done talking about that, I'm like, all right, so what I really meant was, how are you? Like, how is life? Like, how are you doing as a person? It's like, that's that's what people really don't really talk about too much because you're thinking about all the superficial things first. Hey, but it's the things that, can you pass Can you pass this on to your kids? I agree, yeah. Like, if you would have children, could you pass on? Your traits and everything. Any, yeah, any traits, anything you do that doesn't require your work or your skill set or whatever, like. It's being a good human being. Correct. That's literally what being a human being is about. Yeah. But like you're saying, that's what society's failing about. Is yeah. that people are getting so caught up in their careers that they're kind of losing the personality that they can, the traits they give off to their children. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, I don't know how being, I'm not throwing shots here, this is just the first thing that came to my mind. Yeah. It's like how like an Instagram model, what's she gonna pass on to her kids? Like, that, I don't, I don't yeah. know her like personally or anything. I'm yeah. just saying like from taking pictures, you can teach your kids how to take pictures, but how does that like? I mean, that's that just like this is what you see, right? For right. If we're right. using, since we're talking about an Instagram model, yeah, yeah, yeah. you see them taking a picture, but you know you don't know who they are. Correct. You don't know their personality. They could be, they could be passing out like the greatest gems to their children. They could be such a, such a, that's true. I don't know, a beautiful, beautiful person, whether you're a woman or a man, who's modeling like. 
outside of the modeling and outside because you just see on Instagram it's just what you it's see just the picture yeah, it's just yeah, the yeah. picture you don't know who they are they could be what you think they are they could be something completely different but until you get to know someone you have no idea who they are who they really are and, and that's where I'm, I'm kind of looping it in is that like people's careers are now becoming their identities yeah that's so, like if you yeah. talk to someone and they're like oh I'm an Instagram model he or she might say like oh yeah I was here I took pictures here yeah. I did some work but then you ask that's cool but like who are you? Yeah. And they only talk about... I see what you're saying. You don't want to lose sight of yourself within yes, that. Yes. Uh, you, you can easily lose sight of yourself in that where that becomes your identity. That becomes my soul. That That's becomes my personality. About. That's all you want to do and it's just like... Yeah. yeah. The thing is being able to be aware of who you really are outside of that too. And like you said, like that can... Yeah, it can be a problem if it becomes your identity. Cause that's not who you really are. That's just who you became. And it just like over... It just, I don't know, covered up your soul like it yeah. just covered up your heart like that's, that's what i was that's gonna really you it's my segue i was i was building it up to segue the, into this is how we talked about before we started how social media there's like your presence online yeah and then there's your presence in person yeah it can be very different you could be a dickhead to the internet but you could also be like a good samaritan behind the scenes yeah yeah so my question here is what i guess what what do you think is necessary for, for having social social media fame or, or clout so to speak what do you think is necessary yeah like to get that attention i know so there's like i feel like honestly if i think that i think two ways about it i think one if you're honestly just true to your um genuine self mm -hmm. not like who you truly are if you're like super weird or super anything like who are you and just let that out on social media, which is hard to do. Like if you're just okay. want to be goofy or dance and be just you, just like out there, like, oh, I'm me, like free of judgment. No one's watching me. I'm doing whatever I want in the world and having fun. I think that that brings in that can that brings in a lot of people like attracted to you, to your personality, because they can sense this person is being authentic. You can feel energy through, at least, like, I feel like when I'm watching someone's videos, I can feel, like, their energy or presence, if they're being truly authentic. Like, I like this person's videos because the way I feel from watching it is, like, it's them, and I like them. I like this energy. And you can, you can, you can gain things that way. And you can also tell, you know, the other ways, like, if you just fake it and just, like, put on, uh, like you said, if you're this person in real life, but then you play a character for social media, like the whole Hollywood thing, like, you know, like just being obnoxious or just being crazy or just doing something just ridiculous and playing the whole Hollywood role will also get you like, all the whole social media following and all that, but in the best light. not in the best light, but it's also like another, I guess, I don't know if you want to call it a strategy or whatever, but people do that too. And after the fact that we talked about earlier, once you have that, um, like those people watching you or anything, then then you kind of let more of your authentic self out a little more. Like I am, like your more mature side or everything. The more like the message you want to give off to the world or give off to the people watching, and they see that different side of you. Like oh, I never even thought this person would even be like this. I thought he would never be like. He's respectable. He's this. He's that. Like he's so like, great. He's actually a good person. But all this, yeah, he's actually a good person. But like the character this person is playing is just like. I don't even want to like talk to you because you just seem like so terrible of a person Like you don't care about anybody but yourself. No, facts. But there's both. I think there's two ways to go about that. But honestly, at the end of the day, I think if you're just authentically you and you're just giving off whatever energy you want to give off, people will like it. Because I think there's been personalities on the internet. If you're just very quiet and calm and just like you, a simple dude, I don't know, the first person that comes to mind is like Sam Selleck. This with fitness stuff. Just, yeah, it, re it resonates like, he, well. He, yeah, because he's like he relates to people. He's just being himself. You can tell he's just not. He's not doing. He's not whole doing whole thing. it. He's he's just like, yeah, is, and there's other people who are more out there, and because they are like that, and they resonate with people, and people like them because they can tell like this guy's just being himself, and this girl's just being herself, and we like that. Like you said, you can feel energy. You can feel energy. I find it so it's like super ironic. Like think about it in movies. There's people who are 
continually acting a role. Yeah. You fall in love with that character. Yeah. It's like you know the difference. But then you take social media and it's like, all right, you can't tell if someone's acting as a role or playing a part, but you're taking them serious as this as if this is who they are. So the difference between like the movies and the social media is that yeah. like the movies it's clearly showing you this is an alternate viewpoint. Whereas the social media we're all seeing the same viewpoint and there's no like there's no filler letting you know like hey this is all scripted hey this is whatever yeah so it's like the people who are judged for acting apart are being seen as social media wise people who are known for acting apart are looked down upon versus the people who are professionally doing it are like looked up to but this is nothing like who they are so like people for instance um who's a handsome man who's a handsome man? brad pitt brad pitt uh -huh. brad pitt has all these roles women love it he's like oh he's so charming but then behind the scenes i don't i don't know anything specifically but like he didn't have the best relationship with like angelina jolie mm -hmm. but you're like oh but he's prince charming he's handsome he's this he's that what's yeah. going to possibly go wrong you don't know what brad pitt's actually like versus like all right the internet you take sam sulik dude goes online acts generally him people love him meet him in person meet and greet he's actually what he's presenting online yeah. so it's like it's yeah. breaking that barrier of reality yeah reality and what you see through your screen yeah yeah I think the movie thing's interesting yeah because I feel like also with movies it's like the movie's job is to immerse you into believing and feeling like this is real mm -hmm. you walk out of like an Avengers movie or whatever you're like you feel like you, feel, you feel like an Avenger. You feel like I can do. You know, watch an Iron Man movie. You just feel like oh, I can do something crazy. I'm getting the world I'm safe. A, uh, yeah, like you, you know, I'm gonna go hit the gym and just like you watch Spider Man and you know suddenly just you know start it's just like it affects you in real life. Yeah. It, whether it's positive or negative, it it, it's you, it inspires you most. Like you see something crazy, like a John Wick movie. God. You know, like the feeling you, the the way you feel walking out of that movie is like, no one can stop me, <laughs> because of how immersive the movie is. I think that's the job of a of a movie or a TV show yeah. to bring you into their reality and to make you feel this is real. And they make it clear though. They they make it clear. Like you know it's a movie. You know it's not. Real. Yeah, you're. Yeah, you know it's a movie. Versus social media, which ties into our reality pretty well. Yeah. And it like. I don't know. I mean, we'll maybe have to talk about this more another time. Yeah. Um, but we are in an hour, though. Is there anything? That's that, crazy. It doesn't I, even feel like we've been. It doesn't feel like an hour. an hour. But is there anything like you want to get off your chest? Anything you came on to speak about specifically? I don't really have an agenda or anything that I wanted to speak about. But I don't know if we had to leave on anything. I would just say honestly, yep. man, you just got to do it makes you happy at the end of the day regardless of what we talked about like i think the biggest thing in life is to do whatever makes you happy um literally just chase whatever dream you got in your head i feel like if you get if, if there's if there's a vision or a dream that gets planted in your head you you see the vision no one else can see it you see the end result you see that you know um you know if all this hard work can lead to this and it, it's in your head if that's in there it's in there for a reason i don't think I don't think it's the universe or God, whatever you believe in, planted that in you just as a joke. I feel like that's very possible. The only difference is your faith, you know, when things are not going your way. I think that's like the biggest deal is just to keep believing in your dream regardless of things happening against it. You know, like, oh, this happened to me, this happened to me, this is going on in my real life. Um, just keep keeping that faith towards your dreams and just working hard and just literally just putting your head down and chasing that vision because it's there it can it's attainable just do the work and keep the faith you can do whatever the hell you want to do in this world i feel like everything's literally in your palms just, just you just got to maneuver properly thanks and that, that's why i'm here now yeah that's why we're here now damn I think, yeah, I think that's a good way to Yeah, and it's it not like it's, it's not going to be easy, obviously There's people who have it It's perspective People who have it easier than us mm -hmm. Much A million times harder than us, too right. But, you know Whatever you can do with, with your given circumstances Just They're not us at the end of the day Yeah just, You have a vision Just chase it, bro Like, that's it I like that You have a vision Just chase it So Like you said it best We're going to wrap it up here um, This is Piece by Piece Episode 27 
I uh, haven't thought of a name yet to give it, but I'll, I'll come about it. Yeah, we talked about a lot of different things. I know, so let's we'll come up with a title. But thank you for watching. Um, please give us a like and follow um, on Instagram, Peace by Peace Podcast. You can check us out on Twitter at Peace by Peace. Um, subscribe to our YouTube, which is Peace by Peace. We're also on Spotify. We're on Apple. Uh, I'm hoping to find any more streaming services we can get, so we're trying to be as many places as we can. Um, give us a comment down below if you like what you heard, if you want to talk about anything. Um, we're soon to have a guest inquiry form, so if you want to be on a part of Piece by Piece for an interview, let us know. Um, but other than that, thank you for watching. Uh, hope you're all taking care of yourself and that you all have a good night. Peace.